Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Lukoch. I tend to not have that much of a problem with sharing honestly. And so um, I was pretty forthright about some of my life path and life decisions and stuff. That's just kind of my personality. I came home from work one day and I found my wife sitting on the floor in the guest room and she wouldn't look up at me. And finally, after a little while, I coaxed it out of her, what, what's wrong? And she said, I've been thinking about what I'm gonna do with the Vespa key. I didn't know what she was talking about. We have a Vespa, but, and so she said, when I go to the Golden Gate Bridge, I need to take the scooter to get there. And when I jump off the bridge, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the Vespa key. I met and fell in love with my wife, Julia, when I was 18. And when you're 18, you don't think about the future very much. And when I thought about it, I thought it was gonna be bright and shiny. I didn't think that someday this person that I love so much was gonna get really sick and that she was gonna experience so much pain and that I was gonna spend so much time afraid and worried about whether she would live or die. As for my specific moth story, I actually didn't work with it, with Julie on it much at all. Um, we've talked about this so much. Um, she's very, I think, comfortable with my take on things. I asked her, I was like, do you wanna hear it? She's like, you know what, I kinda wanna just wait till the event because I know I know you're gonna be respectful to how I would want it to be told. I was completely over my head. And so I took her to the hospital and I had to literally grab her. But she was kicking and screaming and trying to grab onto doorknobs in order to get her into the car to take her to the hospital. And once we got there, they admitted her to the psych ward. And let me just tell you, the psych ward is just as horrifying as it looks in the movies with the blank white walls and the bars on the windows and the little cups with medicine. And I visited her every day from 7 to 8.30 during visiting hours. And sometimes she didn't want me to visit. She was scared that if I came close to her, this thing that was inside her might get me too. And so in this perverse way, she was trying to protect me while I was trying to protect her. And I didn't, know, I, I didn't know what to do, so I did everything because I thought somehow maybe I could love this thing out of her. Maybe I could say the right thing to her or I could hold her close enough or I could ask the right questions to the doctors and I could somehow make this go away. Mental illness is so stigmatized, but it's so prevalent. Like the statistics are really shocking about how many people actually deal with mental illness and how many families have to address it. And yet when my wife was hospitalized, I thought I was the only person in the world who had ever done this because I couldn't find anyone out there talking about what it was like to have your wife locked up in a hospital. So that really became kind of my charge. It was like, I want to be out there talking about this stuff so that hopefully some guy either in the audience or watching on YouTube or whatever, or child or parent or whoever it might be says, hey, this is similar because of my sister's going through this or my son's going through this or whatever else it might be. And I think it's just gonna hopefully make him feel less alone. Now, when she was discharged, I took three months off work in order to stay home and take care of her. And I thought three months is gonna be plenty of time. Well, she'll be fine. And after three months, I had to go back to work to keep up my insurance. And she wasn't fine at all. She was, you could say worse, because she was openly suicidal at that point. And so I go to work and basically panic all day. And then I come home and pretend everything was fine and dance around the house and be goofy and just try to keep, keep life light for her and for me. And, and this was our life for months. You know, for months, I was her cheerleader and I was her watchman, but I was also terrified and I was slowly falling apart inside. I've listened to a lot of the moth stories and I, in my opinion, the best stories I've heard, couple humor with tragedy or, or emotion or whatever. So I really was hoping that I could make it funny. And it's not funny, <laughs> unfortunately. I had to let that go. I've just really embraced it, like, yeah, it's a, it's a heartbreaking story, what we went through. It was really hard. That's okay. I don't need to be the funny guy who somehow makes his sadness funny. Finally, after nine months, they sat me down and they said, 
we think it's time we consider ECT. ECT stands for electroconvulsive therapy. And I know that a lot has changed since the 60s and one flew over the cuckoo's nest, but when they said to me they wanted to give my wife shock treatment, that's when I really, I knew it was at the edge, and I once again feared, is Julia ever going to get better? But they said, we're going to give it one last try. We're going to give one last drug combination, another shot before we go that route and hope for the best. Two weeks later, we're in aerobics class. And I look in one of the mirrors and I see Julia and she's smiling. You have to understand how rarely she smiled. And I smiled back. And I stopped and I watched her for a little bit. And she was less slow. She was more in control of her body. She was coming back. And I turned and I faced her and I looked in her eyes. For the first time in nine months, I saw life again. I saw this spark of health that we all take for granted so much. And I knew she was gonna make it. And I turned back to that aerobics teacher and I kept going so hard. I thought my arms were gonna fall out of their socket. I was so victorious. So the part that I don't mention in this story is that my wife has bipolar, which does come back and in fact is back right now. Like my wife is currently sick. Um, she is currently heavily medicated and was in the hospital three months ago. Um, that means that this story once again feels very, very raw to me. But what's going to be good for me is to talk about the past. I'll get to use the past tense and, and get to drop the present tense for 10 minutes. And I think that's going to be really important for me because I think it's going to remind me, you know, I try to remind myself this all the time, but like we went through it once, we can get through it again. My name is Mark Lukacs. I'm a first-time moth storyteller. Please subscribe to Thinker.